All right, we're going to go over installing official Windows 11, not using the leaked version or using the upgrade method, which I've already gone over in two past videos. I wanted to make this one kind of special and use third gen Intel hardware, hardware that's roughly 10 years old. I still think it's really good hardware, but it is an Ivy bridge from I think around 2012 is the actual date of the processor. I've had this for a very long time and it was actually a hand-me-down system. So we're gonna try to install Windows 11 on that. As far as the ISO I'm using, I am using this one, which I'm gonna show you on the desktop. Right here, Enderman did a video over this. Uh, it's basically creating your own Windows 11 ISO using UUP and ImageX and some other Microsoft tools basically to make its own ISO file. I did look through the CMD download here and there are a couple things that give me pause. So this might not be for everybody and I would not recommend running this tool on your main system. I used a VM just in case there's some shenanigans. But if we look in here, there are a couple things that I wanted to point out. First off, the script itself, it is downloading and outputting the main script from rgadguard.net, which is a Russian site. So definitely on the gray area here, whether this is uh, <laughs> legit or not. All the files I saw that was put in and downloaded looked as if it was from official Microsoft servers. However, the script itself is from a third party. And I always say, hey, look over the scripts. And that's one thing that caught my eye that I did not like but everything that it did download, I checked for viruses, I didn't find any, and I did notice that. But just know that this script that it is running might change, they could change it on the server side of things, and well, that could be up really bad for you. So it just depends on your comfort level. Again, if worried, definitely use a VM to do this process. However, it was a one-click process. Run it, and then you have your ISO file. So with that said, I went ahead and used Rufus and I got Rufus here. You can always download Rufus. I think Rufus.ie or just use Chocolatey like I do. But you select your device. As far as the image I'm using, it's the image that was created by the CMD file. And this is going to be as close to official Microsoft ISOs once they release that. So with that, I'm going to put this thumb drive in and we're going to boot directly to uh, almost 10 year old PC and see if we can install this. All right, here is the BIOS. I did update the BIOS a while back just because it does have some out of band management options on this old PC that I use. But as you see, it's the old school BIOS. There is no TPM, there is no secure boot in this system. So it is not compatible with Windows 11. Uh, but it's still a really good system. And frankly, I miss this old BIOS screen. These are the best. But let's go ahead, boot into our Windows 11 install and see what we can do. All right, here we are. Everything looks pretty much the same as Windows 10. I'm just gonna go install now and go through the quick setup. And then we get this. Your computer cannot run Windows 11 because it doesn't meet the minimum requirements. Instead of modifying sources uh, to include AppRiser.dll, like many videos say. Let's see if we can't just bypass that all together. So the first thing, the next logical thing would be to partition out the disk. So we're just gonna use disk part for that. If you hold shift and press F10, it'll launch right into this screen. We got our command prompt and we can just do a disk part right here. List disk and you can see all the different disks you have. Now I'm gonna select disk zero disk zero and list the partitions nothing there and i i'd recommend just kind of going and making yourself familiar with each disk and seeing what partitions are on them let's look at disk one list par nothing there and then finally let's uh, select disk two and you don't have to actually do the full i think you can just do sel but i i don't know i'm just weird and this one right here has one. If you want to know more about those partitions, you can do list vol. And this kind of says, oh, okay, that's that's definitely my installation media is disk three. So we'll put it all on disk one. So let's go select disk zero, actually. Now, when you're doing list disk, look for GPT on the far right there. If you don't see an asterisk, you're definitely going to need to do a conversion to GPT. And you can do just CONV for convert and then just type GPT to convert that to that 
system. You can't be MBR for any of these. Now we create the EFI or the boot partition. So we're just going to go create par EFI size and equals 512. And we're just going to do a format FS equals 32, I think. Oh, fat 32. And just do it quick. All right. And that's formatted. We'll assign this letter G. So G is going to be the boot partition. And now we're going to create partition primary. With that done, we can just do a format quick. And we'll assign letter C. No. Oh. <laughs> C is already there, so let's do set letter D. All right, so D is going to be our OS, and I think pretty much everything's done with disk part here. We can go ahead and exit, and we can see what is in C. Oh, C is where everything is. Okay, that's the actual installation media. D is going to be where we're going to put our Windows install, and then E is going to be, or I'm sorry, G is going to be our boot partition. Just good to kind of line those up. The two big things is knowing where your installation media is, where your actual main drive is going to be, and then where your boot partition is going to be. So we'll go into D, and I think from here I can just do a DISM, and we're going to get information and figure out what indexes are on this ISO. We can just do a get image info. Capitalization is important. And we'll do image file, C colon sources install.wim. Okay, so we have one index that's going to be a Windows 11 Pro. There are nothing else in that installation image, so we know to use index one. Uh, your standard install disk usually has upwards of 8 to 12 indexes, so it's definitely important to pay attention and do this command. So we'll do DISM. This is the install that we're going to be doing. Apply image, image file, and then we do our full path here. Sources dot install dot WIM index will equal one, and we're going to apply it to directory D colon. And I forgot the colon there, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and that should be our syntax. This is basically the exact same as what would happen in a traditional install. We're just doing it all from command prompt with no modifications to what the official ISO will have. All right, now that image is completely applied, but we're not ready to reboot yet. We're just going to do a DIR. You can see it's already put all the files into this. Well, we haven't done anything with that boot yet, which is important. Now, I did a video on this about a year ago. If you ever mess up your Windows boot partition, check out that video. I help repair it using boot rec. But this time, we're going to use boot rec to actually make our boot partition. We're just going to go BCD boot. This is going to copy all of our files over into our G, which is our boot partition. And that should do it right there. Hit enter. That should copy everything over, all the boot files needed. All right, let's go ahead and kick this guy and see if we can get into our Windows 11 on about 10-year-old hardware. And it looks like it went ahead and took it. All right, and here is our Windows 11. Let's go ahead and fly through the install, and we'll set it up for personal use next. And we'll just go sign in options and do an offline account, limited experience, test, password. I always leave blank. That way I can skip all the security questions and privacy. I don't even think they'd honor it even if you said no to those. So <laughs> why always do that in post? All right. And here is our Windows 11. You can see <laughs> it's kind of I'm seeing some issues or, or problems with that let's look at our device manager real fast see if it <laughs> installed everything yeah i'm missing a couple different things here that i could probably fill in i am going to change the display or the personalized settings real fast and that looks pretty good let's just look at our settings menu real quick now this is the old school metro ui which does not look what i see in the insider build so i'm curious to see what kind of downloads i have here so on the Insider build, I know we're about 22,000, so I'm going to do a WinVer. And this one is 22,000, but I think the Insider build's just a bit ahead of this, this build right here. But as you see, everything works just fine without TPM or Secure Boot or any of that nonsense or arbitrary numbers that Microsoft have given us. I could totally use this. It's not laggy at all. Everything's the exact same as Windows 10. Like I said, Windows... 
in Microsoft are just wanting people to upgrade their hardware for no reason. And that's basically where I'm going to leave this. I just wanted to take the oldest piece of hardware I own, upgrade it to Windows 11 without any modifications other than <laughs> grabbing that ISO. I can't wait to do this with an official ISO and show folks that everything they've done thus far has just been in really bad faith when it comes to limiting people's hardware experience. Microsoft is in the wrong for this. This is a perfectly usable system. If you wanted to stay on Windows and upgrade to Windows 11, they're just putting this arbitrary limitation on it for zero reason. Well, I mean, not zero reason. I mean, <laughs> the money, I suppose, and hardware vendors will love them for doing this. Uh, but that's it for me. Obviously, this has been a blitz of Windows 11 this week. I just kind of wanted to dive in and show everybody the different types of things going on with Windows 11. Overall, I like the OS. I like the look of the OS. But uh, obviously, all the security and privacy problems of Windows 10 carry over with Windows 11. And then obviously, this huge shit show of an experience we got with the TPM and limitations on hardware CPU. None of it makes any sense. And I don't know why they're doing it. But if you know why, or you have a theory, let me know in the comments section, because I always love to hear all this stuff. And uh, I think they'll walk all this back and we'll just get a regular Windows 11 like you saw today and everything will be all right. But at the same time, I want people to be vocal about this because this ain't cool because there's plenty of perfectly good PCs out there that are basically going to get thrown in the trash because Windows 11 doesn't run on them. Or maybe that person's just like, ah, forget it. I'm going to go buy a new PC to use Windows 11. And I know that's not going to be everybody, but there's still going to be part of the population that does it. And in my mind, that's just wrong. Off my soapbox. Again, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.